So, hello everybody. Thank you for coming uh, to my session. My name is Travis Flans. Uh, we're going to talk about WordPress and Facebook integrations and automations. Um, my goal here was to kind of mention some tips and tools that I use that you may not already be familiar with, super familiar with, um, and not just give you all the basics that you've already seen. Um, as well, each one of these slides in this presentation could be a whole day workshop, so uh, just keep that in mind. We're not going to be getting super deep into it um, just because of the nature of a 45-minute session. Uh, but this is the last session of the day, so we can hang out as long as you want and talk. I'm happy, perfectly happy to do that. Oh, yeah, participation points. Uh, who has been in one of my sessions in the past? We got one person. Awesome. All right. Um, I really hope you all decided to participate. I am a lot different than a lot of speakers. I like uh, the participation. I encourage it. Uh, if, you, if we start rambling on about one thing too long, I've been doing this a while, I can just transition out of that, no problem. Um, but if we don't participate, you as a crowd, it's going to be super short and super boring. I guarantee that. All right. Um, who am I and do you care? That's the biggest question. Uh, I am an SEO and content strategist. Uh, my company is WebWorks of Kansas City. Um, I've been doing this as WebWorks of Kansas City since 2007. I've been a co-organizer of WordPress Kansas City, our local WordPress enthusiasts and professionals group in Kansas City, and WordCamp Kansas City since 2014. I love dogs. You're going to meet all of my dogs today throughout my slides. Um, I also run the Kansas City Dog Club, which, yes, it's exactly like it sounds. It's a social club for dog lovers. Uh, I'm on the advisory council of Spay and Neuter Kansas City, which is a organization that helps, <laughs> helps families in need and get low-cost spay and neuters. And I volunteer at Wayside Waves, which is one of the largest uh, humane societies in Kansas City. Um, and all, last, I always like to say I'm nobody, really. Um, I'm up here because somebody thought that they think that I may know enough information to pass on to other people. But don't take everything I say at heart and believe it 100%. Make sure you do your own testing, your own research, and listen to everybody else you heard here today as well. Um, no, nobody knows everything, no matter if they want to tell you do they do or not. So this leads me to one thing. Try to take one thing out of today's presentation and uh, implement it right away. Um, and also, I judge my own success if one person comes to me and tells me they learned one thing. So sorry for the rest of you other 30 people. If you didn't learn one thing, I'm going to think I was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this is, we all know these numbers, right? Everybody knows Facebook. Everybody knows uh, WordPress. They're both big. I just put a couple of my favorite stats. Um, uh, a lot of people think that Facebook is dying after the whole Cambridge Analytica thing. It's not. It's still by far the most used social network. Uh, 1.45 billion active users a day. Ridiculous. One out of every five minutes spent on a mobile device in the United States is on Facebook or Instagram. Think about the insanity of that. Of course, everybody knows that WordPress is up to 30% of the internet, 24 published posts every second, 37 million Google searches for WordPress every month. Freaking crazy. All right, so that's why I am doing this presentation, because we both know, or both me and you as a collective, know how big both of these are, and you likely use both of them in your business or <coughs> with your websites. So now, first audience participation, what types of integration and automation do you want to do with your websites? Automated posts. Automated posts. Publishing to Facebook? Publishing to Facebook. Posting to Facebook. <laughs> Come on, we got somebody else. Hey, nobody? I was thinking, stick a picture and just a quick caption on Facebook and have it pop back to the site. Ah, you're saying go the other way with it. Okay, very interesting. Anyone else? All right, well, those are two very quick things. We'll be done in five minutes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so that leads me to think that you all are already doing some cool integrations, right? Since uh, we only got two people wanting to do different things. So who's already integrating or automating? What are you automating back there? Or integrating? Um, yeah, my, uh, my foundation website. I, I move my uh, blog post from uh, my uh, website to my Facebook. 
All right, you do that, and it goes automatically. No, I don't do it automatically. I have to do it myself. Oh, you're doing it yourself. Okay. All right. I saw a hand here. What What are you automating? Uh, I'm just uh, integrating feeds onto websites for clients that they have already done themselves. I'm pulling it into the website. You gotcha. Okay. Anyone else? I just have it going in automatically for Facebook, Twitter, all of those. Gotcha. All right. What do you know? What plugin you're using or tool specifically you're using? Okay. No problem. We'll talk about a couple. Well, I use Jetpack to do pretty much everything. Every change that I've made on my website has been sent to 15 different social networks. Cool. And Wolf, Wolf just had a no-no moment when we were talking before this, so we're gonna. That's why he's here because I told him I wouldn't tell him a different tool until <laughs> until unless he came. So, all right. Well, that's that's good. So we're kind of a kind of a blank slate. Um, so I hope to give you a lot of valuable information to at least help you continue your research and experimentation. So let's talk about the obvious. I like to call it hookups because that's more fun than integration. <laughs> you know, uh, how is Facebook and WordPress hooking up? Uh, so let's talk about the obvious ones. Uh, sharing new blog posts to your business page. Sharing new blog posts to your personal Facebook profile. Okay. Uh, sh social sharing buttons for visitors, right? Everybody likes those. Jetpack has that, right? So let's talk about some of the obvious ones first. So auto post or auto sharing your new blog posts. I've got three levels for you here. And you don't really need to scribble everything down as fast as you can. Um, I tweeted out a link to get my uh, slides. And every single thing that's underlined here is linked in my slides as well. So it'll be nice, easy for you to quick. Oh. Quick and easy for you to click. So good, Jetpack. Who uses Jetpack? Wolf uses Jetpack. We got some Jetpack fans. Okay, got some Jetpacks. So better, social networks auto poster. That's the one I was uh, getting with, getting at. So I'm gonna skip the best here for a second. We're gonna walk through the best because it's a little different. This is a tool. This is a tool. Like I said, I'm gonna share some tools with you that you may not know. Beginning on July 26, 2018, you will no longer be able to automatically post from third-party tools to your personal profiles. This is something that is going away because uh, Facebook is getting a lot rid of a lot of their automation and their API accesses. There's another one that's really big. Um, so Jetpack won't be able to post to your personal profile anymore. Social networks auto poster though, and again, remember this is why everybody hates Facebook right now, is somebody broke the terms of service that they agreed to when using Facebook. That's how they got all that data, right? Yep. It wasn't Facebook that gave it out. It was somebody stole it or improperly accessed it. Well, networks, social networks auto poster actually does not use the Facebook API. It goes around that, which means it goes around the terms of service. But chances are this one still will be able to post to your uh, personal profiles. This allows, this actually, this tool allows you to do a lot of things. Uh, you can post to dozens of different networks. Uh, you can schedule your posts to be evergreen and share on a schedule and in the future as well. Um, so it's a really neat tool. It's not free. Um, honestly, most of the tools I'm mentioning are not free. So uh, we'll just put that caveat out there. So the best, missing letter. Now this isn't actually a WordPress plugin. It's not a WordPress tool at all. But let's be honest, we all love WordPress, but not every single thing has to go through our WordPress website for us to be successful, right? So I'm gonna talk about missing letter just a little bit because it's really cool and really unique. So, um, and again, it's a tool that not a lot of people have heard of. So what this tool does is it allows you to create your, pro, your um, let's say, campaign or enter your website, uh, enter all your social profiles for your website, and then add your RSS feed. From there, every time that you make a new blog post, it'll send you a little email reminder. Hey, we see you have a new blog post. Would you like to start a campaign with Missing Letter? Now, what's really cool with Missing Letter is that once it sees a new blog post, it's going to say, hey, we recommend these hashtags. Some of them are kind of generic, missing, nah, that's not very good. But you can enter a handful of hashtags that you say are relevant to this blog post. And then you get going. 
And then, so what it's going to do, basically what this does is create a calendar over the next year to automatically share out your evergreen content repeatedly for you. Now, obviously, if uh, you're paying, a, paying attention to the landscape of the social networks, Twitter no longer allows you to post the same tweet twice at all. It used to be in a short period of time, but now at all. It doesn't allow you to retweet the same tweet more than once either. So what's great about this is that, so we can see kind of here, the way that I have it set up, you can actually shoot, choose shorter campaigns or you could customize your own campaign. But it's going to create nine posts to be sent over the next year for me. It's got 22 text suggestions that it automatically pulls from my content. So it's got a kind of a machine learning background so it can figure out what's important, the content. And then if it finds any images, it will also suggest those images to be shared as social media. And you can have all your, all your uh, profiles you can set up. So you see here I've got uh, two Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Google. But basically how it does is it says, all right, so here's your first post that we're going to do. It's going to go to all these networks. Your second one's a little different. It didn't do such a great job on this one, but that's okay. Because it allows you to go to each profile and change it. So if you only have one or two images, you can create text bubbles to create quotes from your post as well. So it's a good way to create interesting, unique content uh, around one piece of content. Now I'm going to tell you though, make sure you do go through and look at these because it is a newer service. So I don't know if you saw this one. It just puts in quotes, Moz Local. That's not a very good text. However, it's extremely powerful because if you go through this, I mean, like I said, it found 22 little text snippets that it liked to use. But you can change each one for each posting. Just very interesting and it's a different way than what you're doing automatically. Now you're automating it for the year, you're putting in work up front. I guess that's something I should have mentioned from the beginning. Automation does not mean no work. Automation means you prepare for the work that's going to be done later. If you're really preparing and doing automation right, you are spending a ton of time with the work at the beginning. Uh, but we'll talk more about that when we get to the advertising and marketing sections. And then also this campaign doesn't or this, this account doesn't have a lot, but you can see all of your posts that are scheduled throughout the entire months and all that kind of stuff. So we'll go into the second part because we already talked about that posting to your individual profiles on Facebook is kind of going to be going away automatically. So that stinks, but something we're going to have to deal with. You said individual. What is it? Business? business pages are still good. Personal profiles is what is going to be ending in July the end of July. So getting others to share your blog posts. Jetpack, who uses Jetpack to put the little share icons in their posts? Anybody? You know what I'm talking about, right? To share this content? Jetpack's okay. Press the social share counter. This is what I use on WebWorks of Kansas City. Uh, social war warfare is my favorite. Um, it allows you to create different images and insert your different images and your different texts that you want to be shared with that content for every single post that you publish. So it has a layout and says this is a size of layout of image. It's best for Facebook, for Twitter, for LinkedIn, for Google, for Pinterest. Uh, this one is, when I say fairly pricey, it's not really that pricey. It's like $27 a year, something like that. Uh, but it's fantastic. And now a tool that you probably haven't heard of. Who's heard of Q? Good. This is one of my favorite new tools. So let's talk about Q real quick. So Q is a, multi, is a multifaceted type of service. They have one service that's free for you to sign up. They do have premium programs as well. But you can sign up and you can say, all right, my business is interested in these categories. Let's just, for this purpose, let's just say it's SEO content strategy, or SEO, blogging, and WordPress. And I say, all right, I'm interested in these cat three categories. They handpick and curate content that are in those categories, and then they will automatically schedule it for you to go out to your social media profiles. So if you're a lazy tweeter 
or a lazy Facebook poster, but you want to keep content going out, it's a good service to use. However, the other side of that is the Cube Promote. So you, as the website owner and the content creator, can put your content into that basket that is being suggested. Now, again, this isn't free. Um, they have subscription plans, I think, that start at $40 a month. But if you're creating valuable evergreen content with the goal to get somebody to purchase your services, your products, your courses, memberships, whatever that may be, this can be a very inexpensive way to get 800 people, 1,000 people to share your content for 40 bucks. Basically, this kind of works the same way that Missing Letter did. You can set up your profile, your business profile, your website, enter your RSS feed, and it's going to send you a little note. Hey, we see you got a new blog post. Do you want to send this one through Q? So we, we enter our URL. We enter our URL. It kind of pulls it in, pulls in the title, and it creates their little trackable URL there. Pulls in any image you have. That's pretty cool, right? Well, you can also, oh, let's go back. You can change your text that you send out with it. And so this will be the text that is tweeted by anybody else who uses Q or shared to Facebook or I think it's Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and LinkedIn. So it's quite, quite powerful. You can also upload your own images for Twitter and Facebook. So you can have or Twitter and then the same one for Facebook will be used for LinkedIn and Google Plus. So again, this is a good way to get that content distributed to those networks by somebody else. So it's not just you. And also, you can tell it what category that you want this content to be in. Now, you can submit the same piece of content one month and then submit it another month for two different categories, but you can't put it in multiple categories at the same time because if somebody else is, if somebody has those two categories as their business interests, they don't want it to keep going out multiple times. But there are a hundred different very focused categories here. There's one that's dog gifs. I use that for Kansas City Dog Club, and I just put those on our tweet schedule. Very interesting. Very interesting and very easy to use. Um, I've been using this for a few months, and I've been able to see, I think I've spent eh, about 240 bucks that has directly turned into, directly because I tracked it, about $3,500 in direct revenue. So not too bad, you know, less than 10% uh, for our marketing fee. So, some more awesome Facebook and WordPress hookups. All right, so now we're getting into a, let's, let's get into some things that are a little more in depth to what, what you can do and what might be interesting for, who's a small business, who's a small business owner who uses their website for small business? Okay, who use, who's a blogger? And the rest of you don't have websites, right? <laughs> okay, either way. All right. So uh, on-site chat with Facebook Messenger, right? Pretty much every website now has a little chat icon so you can chat, live chat. Nobody ever, hardly anybody live chats though, but it's there, right? It's nice to know. It's very quick to do. Uh, you can embed almost anything Facebook, live videos. So if you're doing a live video, Dave does a lot of live video. If you're doing a planned live video, you can create that blog post ahead of time with an embedded, the video that's going to be live right there. Videos that are already published, photos, Photo albums. Uh, your business page you can actually embed straight into or parts of your business page. And I said profiles, but as we know, that one's going away pretty quickly. Um, pretty much, I don't know if that's going to go away. You may be able to embed your personal profile into still, or at least parts of it. Um, but individual posts, just like you can with tweets, I'm pretty sure that's an O embed built straight into WordPress even, isn't it? Uh, comments, who who uses Facebook comments on their website? Yeah, got a couple. Jetpack, right? I think has that built in. Nope, discuss. I'm not using Jetpack, I'm using the, the actual Facebook plugin. Yeah, there you go. But everybody's seen that, commenting on, on blog posts with Facebook. Uh, so I'm not gonna touch on that too much. Logging in with Facebook. Who, who has a Facebook login on their website? A couple of this. So those are pretty common things. I'm not gonna touch that a ton either. But here, let's go back. Commenting with Facebook, I actually don't use comments with Facebook. I like the vanilla, the built-in WordPress, because why? I like to be able to have that email address, and we'll talk about that later. 
So here we go. Here's an example of the use of the Facebook Messenger. Um, this is a little plugin called WP Chatbot. It's very very simple to hook up to your face. Well, I shouldn't say very simple because you do have to create a Facebook app, but it's very simple. They have instructions that are very easy to do to use. Uh, and I would say I probably, on average, get about get about a dozen or so people chatting with me through this every week. So it's been beneficial. Of course, a lot of times it's people that just want to uh, send a message in the middle of the night that I'm not going to reply to. So, so then, uh, you know, the time to chat goes way up, but I don't really worry about that. But this, is a, this has been a good tool for me. Uh, here's an example of some different embeds that you can do uh, using the WP Embed Facebook plugin. So um, here's the same similar messenger, but this is kind of in a sidebar area on Kansas City Dog Club. So somebody who's logged into Facebook can just type a message right there from anywhere. Uh, we have the, <laughs> just the, kind of, this is, the way that this looks is kind of weird because this is a video actually for, for the dog club. But there's the like box right there and the share right there. Um, here we have an embedded video example and then an embedded photo gallery. So if you're you know, a photographer and you want to put all of your photos on Facebook, it can be very simple to put it back into your into your website. So, you know, kind of, uh, oh, I always forget what it's called. What's the big Yahoo photo that everybody used years ago? No? Flickr? That used to be real. I remember when WordPress really started getting mature, everybody had the Flickr streams in there. In there. And I know it kind of went down. I think Flickr's starting to make a comeback, though, right? Isn't it? Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see. But these are just a couple examples of the awesome, just easy ways to embed. The one that they took away is the Facebook events. And I'm very upset about that. Uh, Facebook events and the integrations and the abilities with their API used to be amazing. Uh, I run a couple uh, meetup groups. We could just create a meetup and then create a Facebook event just based on that meetup. That went away a couple years ago. Now, pretty much the entire events API is gone. Um, so you can't even embed anymore. Um, however, I believe this plugin does have a premium version that, again, does not use the Facebook API. So <laughs> use it to your own risk. So here we go. Facebook hookups for ads and marketing. Who's more interested in this than all the fun stuff? Oh, we got one. All right, good, good. Because that's where that's where I live. Not really live. So let's back up then. So since we only have one person who's interested in the marketing aspect of it, that's fine. <laughs> let's talk a little bit. Of, let's talk a little bit about the the marketing funnel. And this is just kind of a basic funnel um, that I found that I've used for a while that I that I like. It's kind of simple to follow, right? The whole idea with the marketing funnel, who's not familiar with the marketing funnel? Don't be shy. This, this is WordCamp. We got a couple. Okay, thank you very much. So basically, a consumer has a thought. They are figure out that they have a need of some sort. Then they start researching their need. They start analyzing and comparing different companies and different products to fulfill that need. And they make a purchase, hopefully. And then they become loyal and start sharing your business, your products, right? Ideally, that's what happens. How many of you have seen those Facebook ads from a company you've never heard of that says, go buy my thing? <laughs> they come in right here. Well, it doesn't matter if you're on Facebook or in the real world. People still don't want to buy from a brand or somebody that they don't know. So traditionally, if you are just starting a Facebook advertising campaign and you don't have, uh, for simplicity's sake, and you don't have a website, then you kind of need to go through this entire process. You need to make sure people are aware of you. And then after they're aware of you, you need to say, all right, these are the things we have. These are the things we do. This is how we do it. Then hopefully they purchase and become loyal. Well, this, that's why I want to just step through that real quick. Because we're going to talk about integrating directly your WordPress website with Facebook custom audiences. What does that mean? Does anybody use custom audiences on Facebook? I see a head nod. Yeah? Do you use? I've done it once. Okay. I did, Good. I did an ad campaign. 
Good. All right. Did you use the ad campaign based on your website traffic or I like did, demographics? I did both. Yeah, both. I actually had uh, emails and also uh, emails that uh, people that had signed up for stuff on on the website and also used the pixel or I made it. Very good. All right. That's that's. Hey, you're five steps ahead of most people I talk to. That are like that sounds interesting. I see somebody else say, "Yeah, what are you doing? What are you doing?" Uh, you know, the advertisers told me that there are audiences based on whatever it was that they were searching. Okay. But you're just creating the audience based on the demographics and the interests that were in Facebook. Okay. So straight inside Facebook, um, I'm going to recommend it for your for your website and for your business that you use uh, Facebook Business Manager rather than. Um, Rather than just, there are two ways to do it. You can go straight through the page in your personal profile, or you can add your business and your website into the Facebook Business Manager. Highly recommend doing that. It's a lot Instead more foul. Huh? Instead of Ad Manager? Yeah, there's Ad Manager inside of the Facebook Business Manager. There's two diff different ways. If your uh, browser bar and everything is blue, then you're not using the Facebook Business Manager. Okay. It's The Facebook Business Manager is gray. Um, but if you just go to business.facebook.com, that's where you can start getting your business into it. But once you sign up for this, um, we heard the pixel. Mention the pixel. Yes, that's very important. That's a tracking code. Who has Google Analytics on their website? Everybody should have some sort of analytics. The Facebook pixel is pretty much analytics, and it does two things. It, it tr tracks to help you create audiences, as well as Facebook has a pretty solid analytics. Um, and I actually discovered the other day that I've got a problem with some software on my website that I need to figure out what it is because Google Analytics, like the way that they're reporting the Google Analytics, it shows that I have a one, less than a 1% bounce rate on my entire website. Wow. That would be fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't discover it until I was, like, I was in Facebook Analytics and I was like, oh, those bounce rates are completely different. So now I'm trying to work with couple softwares that I, developers, a couple software I have on my website to figure out who is not reporting right and what's going on. Because one of the two, there's definitely a problem. But, uh, so, you can integrate with WordPress here itself. There's a word, there's a plugin, Facebook and WordPress plugin that will help pull in the pixel. I don't use that one. We'll talk about the one I do use later. There's also um, some WooCommerce that you can pull in there. I don't actually use that one either, but we'll talk about what I do use. But this is a very simple way to get started because as soon as you integrate with the Facebook Business Manager, and then just go to Partner Integrations, and you'll see these right here, and you can get started. If you do nothing else or get nothing else out of this presentation today, install the Facebook Pixel. It's super simple, and you don't have to do anything with it until you decide you want to. So in four or five months, you can decide, hey, I want to start advertising to people who have already visited my website, and you've already got it set up. You've already got some data. So what I do use, though, is Pixel Caffeine from Ad Espresso. Is anybody familiar with Ad Espresso? You got one there? OK. Ad Espresso is, is a service that uh, will help you create and optimize ads. Um, and it's, it's an OK service. It takes a while. It takes some money to actually get it going so it gets enough machine. I, don't, I hate using AI because, let's be honest, most companies that say AI, they're not really using AI, it's machine learning, but it takes a while. You got to spend some money before it can actually start optimizing for you. However, Pixel Caffeine is their plugin that helps you put the pixel on the website, on your WordPress website, and I really love this. So what I really like about it, though, is you can put in your, you can create your pixel and just, just honestly, search for add WordPress, add pixel, Facebook pixel to my WordPress website. Uh, we're not going to get too deep in that. We'll just talk about the cool stuff. But the custom audiences you can create. Um, here's an example. On my business website, WebWorks of Kansas City, we're creating an audience WordPress and SEO. Uh, I want data for our last 180 days. I want people who have visited URLs that contain SEO and URLs that contain WordPress. So they've visited both of those types of pages on my website. Now what do you think I can do with that? So, remember when we were talking about the funnel, you need to start here, traditionally. Well, if somebody's already visited my website, where are they at? If I know they've already looked at WordPress, they've already looked at SEO, they're here. 
So I can start creating ads to this audience and showing them to people who are interested in the topics of the ads I can create. So obviously, if I'm creating Word, uh, WordPress and SEO campaign, then I'm just going to target the people that I already know who have visited those who are interested in those types of services that I offer. Um, another really cool thing is you can add additional filters. So there's blog. There's e-commerce. There's, um, I just pulled up one here really quickly, categories. So you can say, hey, if they visited content in any of these blog categories as well. So how many of you categorize your blogs, especially for your business, right? So that's extremely powerful to say, all right, I only want people who have visited blogs that are in these categories. Or like I said, URLs with those words on the other one. Um, but you can include, exclude custom fields. That's huge, right? Uh, you can exclude. Very powerful to be able to create those custom audiences. And then so once you actually, once you, uh, I hit the submit button. Once you hit save, what Pixel Caffeine does is creates this audience for you inside Facebook because you've already integrated it. So you don't have to take that. It's going to be a continually updated audience. Uh, so does anybody see how powerful that can be for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? That's awesome. It's one of those things that you just have to have somebody tell you or That's read. Awesome. Yeah, so I can continue with this audience, and from this audience, I can do other things as well. So we're going to get to that a little bit in a second. So how can we get some easy wins with our Facebook ads and our integrations here? Showcase your expertise. The Facebook users have visited specific pages on your website. So you don't even have to run buy my stuff ads, right? You can just create more of that in-depth evergreen content, shoot that out on Facebook to a super, super targeted audience, and rather than having that four and a half dollar click, you're gonna be cutting that way, way down to pennies because it's super, super targeted, okay? Uh, you can show ads, ads to users who have visited specific product pages on your website, right? Because we've already looked before, we can create those audiences or even specific categories. So if you sell men's shoes, or you know, getting down to men's blue shoes, size 10 and a half, depending on what your categories are like, you know that person is interested in men's 10 and a half shoes. Uh, abandoned carts, who has problems with, who has an e-commerce site in here? Okay, right, that's always a problem, and I'm sure you've seen it on Amazon, right? It's like, hey, are you still shopping for that? No, nah, I'm gonna tell you the stuff I shop for. <laughs> <laughs> I don't embarrass myself too much. I'm already doing that. Um, but you can com combine specific product pages with people who viewed the checkout page but did not view your thank you for buying page. Because now you know people are interested in that specific product. They got all the way to the end and didn't buy. Why didn't they buy? Who knows? Sometimes they ran out of time. Sometimes they needed to go do something. Super powerful because it's unobtrusive. It's something they already want. If you are showing ads of things that people already want to them, they're not gonna they're not gonna feel like they're being advertised to, and that's the whole point with the custom audiences, the Facebook pits, pixel. All right, so let's think outside the box a little bit. Now that you're all excited and nobody's gonna pay attention because they're like, all right, I'm gonna use this for my e-commerce and all that stuff. Oh yeah, I forgot about that picture. I was gonna take that one out. <laughs> I'm not yelling at her. I was acting like I was going to eat her. <laughs> <laughs> She's just are always got. Are they all your dogs or is that one? They're all, all four of them that we've seen are my dogs. Um, <laughs> that that's always the funny one to me though. I always forget it's in here or on my slides, and I always forget to take it out. Uh, so, so we've thought about we've talked about some pretty inside the box type things. Let's think of outside the box, right? Uh, some ways that I use Facebook. I don't always blog. Sometimes I create in-depth posts on my Facebook page. And then when I'm sending out that newsletter, I'll link to my Facebook post. Guess what? As soon as somebody comments or interacts with your Facebook post, that's again a custom audience that you can create inside Facebook. That's somebody who you know is interested in what you're saying. Um, this is something that I discovered not too long ago. Replug. Has anybody heard of Replug? Probably not. It's only a few months old. It's another one of those fantastic tools. Um, who uses Bitly? 
or has heard of Bitly, right? Anybody use Buffer and it's got the Buffer or Hootsuite and they've got their short URL? Well, Rootplug is something that I discovered and there are other services like it, but I like Replug the best. So what you can do with Replug is, we'll talk about it a little more on the next slide, but with Replug, you can actually drop your, your tracking pixel into your URL. Now think about that. If you're sharing stuff on social media and somebody clicks on that, you've now just pixeled that person. And you know that if you are tweeting or sharing on LinkedIn or Facebook even, but in this case we're using other ones to get people to Facebook. But if you're, if you're sharing information about WordPress, you sell WordPress services, they click on your link about WordPress, you know that that person is interested in WordPress, right? Again, so you're skipping that very, very top of the funnel because you've already qualified somebody in being interested in whatever it is that you're sharing. What's also great about uh, Replug, and it's very different than a lot of the other link shorteners, I can go back to that same URL and use it as many times as I want. I can change where it goes. I can change it from, here, let's take a look. Here you go, I can change it so I can put a little call to action here. When anybody clicks on my URL, it essentially loads. I'm sure you, has anybody used Snipply or seen Snipply? So it kind of loads um, your call to action with your website that you shared behind it. So let's take another look here. For example, here's a meetup from the dog club. And I shared this in our newsletter to our dog club members. What, you don't have a Casey dog club shirt? Get one. So now, they got a call to action whenever they come and look at our next event that we have coming up. So they know right there I'm saying, buy, buy a shirt. And that goes to our shop. But they've also dropped that pixel. All of the people in the club, though, we know who they are on Facebook. They're also in our Facebook group. But that is extremely interesting and valuable there. Uh, so you've got all kinds of things you can do. You can add a call to action, a retargeting pixel. You can even integrate with Constant Contact and MailChimp and services like that. So you can actually put a sign up for our newsletter form right here. In fact, if you click on most of these links in <coughs> my presentation, they have examples of the way this works. So I can show you how. Uh, let's see, there's one other outside the box here. All right. Um, who's familiar with Zapier? Or if it's French pronunciation, I'm not 100% sure. But Zapier integrates with over 700 different software websites and services. And using the HookPress plugin, it's old, it hasn't been updated in a long time, but it still works and still secure from all I know. Um, so, uh, but it, it's fairly old, but the HookPress allows you to access any hook that WordPress has. So you can integrate with any single action that WordPress takes on your entire website and integrate it using Zapier for over 750 different pieces of software. Now, that's not too much for you. I don't know what it is. I was gonna get some examples, but I was like, nope, uh, don't have enough time for all of that. But the possibilities are there. Uh, so what third-party services do you use? Anybody wanna give some third, third party? MailChimp, Constant Contact, Mad Mimi, anyone else? No. A Weber. Old school. Old, yeah, well, yeah, that's. <laughs> I, rem I, rem I remember when uh, AWeber started getting big. All right, so I did want to hit on this a little bit because everybody you know, likes to, when we're talking automation, again, automation is a lot of work up front. Um, but some of the four, the not four, the two big ones, everybody knows Buffer and Hootsuite, right, to be able to schedule your posts. Um, and I use, I use Buffer, but I'm moving away from Buffer. I'm moving away from Buffer because it's been around for a long time. It's expensive. They keep getting more expensive and removing feature after feature. Um, so they're not really adding anything new, but all these young players keep coming up and they're offering way more cool stuff at way cheaper prices. Content Studio is from the same company that does Replug. And one interesting thing about Content Studio, I haven't fully gotten into it yet, but you can actually post blog posts <coughs> inside Content Studio as well as hooking up LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, so, and all your social media accounts, you can actually write your blog post straight from inside there and send to, fa uh, to Facebook, <laughs> to WordPress also. So that's very interesting. Uh, social B, uh, it's another one that I'm really liking. So like in my own mind, I'm battling between these two, which one's gonna win out? 
Um, Social B has that evergreen feature built in. Who's familiar with Meet Edgar? Yeah, Meet Edgar. So that's kind of similar a little bit to missing letter that I was referring to. But Social B has that built in as well. Uh, again, all of these tools, though, no matter which one you go with, are going to be dealing with a lot of battles and figuring out how to fix things coming up. Um, we've already seen it with Twitter, changing the way that you can uh, tweet and retweet. Uh, we're seeing it with Facebook, not allowing you eventually, coming soon, to post to personal accounts. Uh, so just keep that in mind. I don't know if either one of these two are going to go around the Facebook API for that or not. Um, but I wouldn't guarantee it, and I would just be careful with that. I'm not saying I'm against it. So coming to the end, which one thing that we talked about today do you want to try first? Somebody who was excited. You, you were excited. So, Which one? Pixel caffeine. Pixel caffeine? Anyone else? Pixel caffeine over there? Social network. Oh, there you go. Yeah? Which one do you want to try? I want to do the Okay, the albums, yeah, there we go. Anyone else? I emailed myself Social Warfare. Social Warfare? That's It's a really cool plugin. I like that a lot. Anyone else? Missing Letter R? I was interested in when you talked at the very beginning. Missing Letter? Yeah, that sounds interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool one. It does take a long time to set up if you're going to do it right, if you don't want everything to look exactly the same. But you're talking about, you know, if say you have five accounts and nine posts, you're talking about 45 posts that you're creating right there. But it kind of gives you a nice guide. It's, it's a fun one. Anyone else? I've been looking for a replacement for YouTube, so I'm uh, and leaning towards Facebook because their supplies just work better. Uh, so I'm thinking maybe Facebook and Ben would be a good option. Ah, there you go. All right. Thank you. Where's this slide right here? Q promote. In the, oh, Q promote? Yeah. Uh, here are just a bunch of resources that I like. I didn't actually change this specific to this, but these are some things that I. Um, work with on a regular basis. If you're looking for content to read or listen to on a regular basis, I highly recommend digitalmarketer.com and their podcast, Perpetual Traffic Podcast. Uh, that's probably my favorite marketing podcast right now. Uh, also, definitely um, Social Media Examiner. I think everybody, does, has everybody heard of Social Media Examiner? They're kind of one of the big ones. Uh, but they have the Social Media Marketing Podcast. But I highly recommend, if you haven't checked it out, the Social Media Marketing Talk Show. It's live on Facebook and YouTube every Friday. And then they also release it. Of course, it's available to watch anytime. But they release it as a podcast as well. That is literally a talk show, a weekly talk show about what's new in social media. So that is, if, if you get one thing, it's the Facebook Pixel. If you get two things, check out the Social Media, <laughs> social media Marketing Talk Show. And uh, that brings us to the last slide, so we can continue some conversation here, or you can take a break before the after party. Um, you can get the slides right away at webworksakc.com slash wcfay, uh, or you can grab my business card if I brought them in, oops, uh, or give me your business card and we can chat. I'll be at the after party tonight, or if you want to you know, schedule a video chat with me, you can go to webworksakc.com slash meeting, and we can talk about whatever your needs are. I'm Travis Flans on all the social medias, and if you connect with me on LinkedIn, please tell me how you know me. <laughs> please, I mean, once, once you hit those like 500 like connections, it only shows 500 plus. So at that point, I kind of uh, curate a little more. So just let me know that you are here at WordCamp Fayetteville. So does anybody have any questions or things they want to talk about? What did you not get from this that you wanted? That's fine. It's not going to hurt my feelings. I'm going to help you. Quick question. Have you been through one of the custom or the Facebook app setup processes lately for the last week, two? Because it's getting it's just a little, changed. It's getting insane. I have not in the last, let's see, I'm trying to remember the last one I did was probably about two weeks ago. So it was probably after the last big change because I believe they made some updates to that the same time that they announced that they're cutting out events. So it's, yeah, believe me, this presentation was created like two months ago, and I have made about 45 updates to it because Facebook has been coming fast and furious with the things that they are 
allowing and disallowing. So no, I have not went through that setup process, but that's like the only thing that I didn't retest here. And I cut a lot of it and added some other things that were more that were interesting as well. Anyone else? Was there something you were hoping to hear that you didn't? When you say the events, so they're taking off the events? Oh. Facebook events are going to remain, but your ability to um, to like embed those events other places. Um, like for example, um, I showed you the Kansas City Dog Club. Um, for my own business, um, when I do speaking engagements, I like to embed the Facebook page there on my website. So that's gone. Uh, I like to do that because it's it's easier to entice somebody to click that interested button if they see it right there rather than have to follow a link and then do it. Um, so for me, that's big. Um, and they keep taking more and more away from the ability with Facebook events. But no, Facebook events are not going anywhere. In fact, uh, Facebook actually announced uh, two days ago, I believe, that they are going to start the ability for you to create paid membership groups too. Really? So that's uh, something that could be very interesting. I know a guy right here who that would be very good for. Yeah. Well, they, and they're doing uh, mentorships now. Um, I'm one of the beta testers for the whole mentorship program. Oh, cool. Very cool. Anyone else? All right. I'll see you all. Oh, I'll see you all at the after party. Thanks for coming out.